Hey guys, what is up? It is your good buddy Sam, and it is time for another exciting Maximus P tutorial. Uh, we have a lot to get to today, but first, a very quick announcement. I am moving, this will be my last tutorial for a long time from San Francisco. I'm actually moving back to the East Coast tomorrow, uh, moving to Brooklyn. And yes, it has already been pointed out to me that moving from the Mission San Francisco to Williamsburg, New York, barely even counts as a move, but I don't care, I'm doing it anyway. Um, more importantly though, this is a very momentous day. Uh, this, you guys, is an absolutely insane event that we are seeing. It is literally the dawning of a new era. This is the era of Max 6. Forget everything, forget Max 4, forget Max 5, and sure as shit, forget pure data. Uh, because Max 6 is now the standard in media programming interfaces. It is so cool and it's jam-packed with new features that uh, really make patching way miles ahead of where it was before and I'm going to do a tutorial series to show you some of those cool new features, highlighting some of those awesome new features. Um, the one we're going to talk about today is the dict object. Dict is a new data structure, uh, well it's not a new data structure but it's a new structure in Max 6 that lets you represent JSON data in Max. What is JSON? Um, think of it this way, it's a simple, clear, readable way to represent structured data. Uh, if that sounds boring, it's only because you have not yet seen the creative potential that it opens up. Uh, so throughout this tutorial, think about how difficult this would have been to do in Max 5 and how easy it is to do here in Max 6. What we're gonna do is make a really interesting synthesizer that simulates a ball bouncing around a room to make sounds. Uh, we're gonna use Dict to do it and we're gonna use LCD to draw it. Let's get right into it because we don't have a lot of time to waste. First, I'm going to throw this patch up here and make it much easier to see by zooming in. I should have done this before I started this tutorial, but I am an incredibly lazy and absent-minded person. Navigate zoom. And now we are hyper-zoomed in and you guys can see and it will be very challenging for me to work with this. So, um, dict is a lot like call. Uh, essentially, it's an object that represents... Uh, these objects reference a space that uh, has some data in it, and you can write that data to file, reference it from file. Um, anyway, it's a structured file data format. Wow, anyway, so I'm gonna call this dict ball state uh, txt, and I'm gonna save this whole patch. I have a little folder here called tup15. I'm gonna save it as bouncy, bouncy, and I'm gonna save, open up this dictionary editor here and save this as ball state txt. Um, there it is, ball state. And then the cool thing that I can do here is come into ball state and write something like, um, let's see. So anyway, sorry, this is the, uh, the dictionary object is a dictionary. And what that means is that it maps keys to values. Uh, keys are always strings and values can be either numbers, strings, arrays, which are lists or dictionaries themselves. Uh, so what does that look like? So in this case, we're going to use a dictionary to represent a ball. Uh, a ball as it bounces around the room. So what do we need to know about this ball in order to draw it and in order to work with it? Well, we need to know where it is, we need to know which direction it's moving in, and we need to know the number of rows and number of columns in the room. We're going to represent our room as having discrete rows and columns and say that the ball has some position that is the nth row and the nth column or something like that. So in order to represent the state of the entire thing, we need a position. So we have a string position, and this uh, colon here can be read as maps to. Uh, in this case, the array, 0, 0. To say that the position is at the 0, 0th position, which will be the top left corner. Uh, it also has a velocity, which is the direction it's moving in, the direction and magnitude of that um, motion. In this case, we're supposed to make it 1, 1. Um, it has, uh, the room has a number of columns. And in this case, it's going to make it 8 and number of rows, let's call that seven. And um, in order to draw the room, I'm also gonna need to know the width and height of the room. And um, so for now, we'll just have these fields called width and height. Um, map this one to zero. And oops, I fudged that. Let's try that again. Save as, not untitled, but ball state.txt. Uh, exists, replace it, I don't care. So anyway, now that ball state is saved, we open this back up and there's nothing in it. That's kind of funky, um, but we can get around that. We can send this uh, dictionary and import method. Um, we'll use open dialog to get the uh, file we just saved. So bang on this open dialog, uh, select ball state, push open, the path comes out this outlet. Uh, import that path, and now if we open up dict, there's all our information, awesome. Now the best thing about this is that 
um, dictionary, this object here, if you think about it this way, this object here, this dict object, is just a um, one facet, one uh, window into that underlying dictionary. So if I duplicate this dict object uh, and double click it, double click this one, it contains the same data, which is so much more powerful than it seems. Um, or maybe it's exactly as powerful as it seems, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so that we no longer have to worry about, um, so for quick reference, we can use the dict.view object to view the contents of that dictionary at any time. Make a dict.view, which for some reason isn't in the autocomplete. Um, but anyway, if we bang on this dictionary, now you can see all the data from that dictionary is populated here in this little view, which is very, very handy for quick debugging. Um, so finally, we've got all that set up. I'm going to save, and now let's get down to the meat, to drawing that ball. So I'll make an LCD. LCD takes very, very simple um, drawing commands and uses them to draw. In this case, we're just going to draw a circle. Um, so let's see, for example, if we pass it the, nope, didn't want that, nope, didn't want that. Um, all kinds of things are happening that I don't want. Uh, if we send it the paint oval method, uh, takes the left corner of the uh, oval, the top corner, the right side and the bottom. So there's our oval. Um, that could be the ball, but it won't be. Excuse me. So we're going to now, now try to actually draw a ball at the position we want. Um, I mentioned before that we we're going to want the width and height of this LCD uh, put it in this dictionary so that we can use it later. So what we're going to do is use the get adder object um, that I honestly can't remember whether or not it's in Max 5 or not. Uh, if it was, then I wish I'd known about it, and if it wasn't, then it's a great new addition to Max 6. Here's how it works. You take the middle outlet, connect it to an object whose attributes you want to watch, um, and then out of this left outlet here is going to come those attributes, either when you bang on this um, inlet or whenever they change, uh, those attributes change in the case where this get adder has the listen attribute. In this case, we're interested in the patching rect attribute. And anytime you want to know what an attribute's called, you can open up the inspector here, click this show hide attribute name button, and it will say here under attribute the name of the attribute that you're interested in. Um, patching rect is the one we want, so we set this get adder at listen, meaning we do care, we do want to be informed when things change, and at adder, uh, patching underscore rect. So now, Whenever the patching rectangle of this thing changes, we should see an update. And we do, awesome. So that is the x, y position of the top left corner and the width and height of this LCD. As I change, these continue to change. It is absolutely amazing digital ontogenies for the win. Um, so we're interested in setting the width and height. So we're going to unpack x, y, width, height, message set width one, message set height one, set width, set height, uh, we can pass these into a totally new dictionary ball state txt, which is so cool. Um, so you see now we're changing this thing over here. Uh, that's setting the dictionary ball state here, but it's also getting updated over here because all those reference the same dictionary, amazingly cool. Now we'll highlight all these, encapsulate, and uh, call this update with height and just tuck it in over here and never think about it again, except now we know that whenever we change this, uh, that state is reflected in our dictionary. So now it's time to use the state in that dictionary to draw. We want to draw now. How are we gonna do that? Well, what we need to do is get the position, number of columns and rows and um, width height of our dictionary, uh, in our sorter dictionary and use those to pass in the correct paint oval command. So how's that gonna work? Um, well, we're gonna use another dict, <laughs> You'll never believe this. We're going to use another dict ball state txt, and what we're going to do is pass it, uh, pass that dictionary into the dict.unpack object. Dict.unpack, um, whenever it gets a dictionary in its inlet, it looks at the keys that are the arguments that you've passed it, and it sends out the appropriate value out of each of its outlet for the key that you passed it in. That was a terrible sentence. Here's what I'm talking about. Um, so, for example, if we give this dict.unpack the key position, and then um, bang on this dictionary here, that's our ball state, out will come zero, zero out of this, the position outlet. And oh, look at that, it very helpfully says value for the position key, that's sweet. Um, so we're interested in the position, the number of columns, uh, columns, co wow, column, and the uh, width of this LCD. Cool. 
And um, I'm gonna move this LCD off to the side here because we don't really care about it right just yet. Uh, we're also gonna be interested in drawing, we're also gonna need the number of rows and the height over here uh, in order to figure out the um, top. So what, what we're sorry, what we're trying to do right now is figure out for any given position of the ball, what the left uh, side of the ball is, the topmost point, rightmost point, and bottommost point. And so naturally, uh, if we're at say position zero zero, then the right left side is zero, and the right side of the ball is just the number of the width of this thing divided by the number of columns. So to get that, um, we're just going to do a tiny little bit of math. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we're going to take the position. Well, first let's see. The position comes out as an array uh, or a list of numbers, the x and y. So we're going to unpack those into x and y, and then multiply. Sorry, multiply that by the width, multiply that by the width of one column. Now, what is the width of one column? Well, that's just the um, width of the entire thing divided by the number of columns. So take that, multiply these two together, and that gives you the leftmost side of the ball. Now, how do we get the rightmost side of the ball? Piece of cake. We just add the width of one column to the left position of the ball. Easy as piss. Sorry, easy as pie. What's easy piss? No one knows. Um, so that's great. That was actually a, even easier than I thought it was going to be. And I've already done like three takes of this video. Um, now on the other side, things are simple. All we have to make sure to change is that we're looking at the y corner of the coordinate of the ball, not the right, not the x coordinate, and that we're dealing with rows and height, not columns and width. Um, and now it's simply a matter of, let's line these up. Yo, how freaking cool are these, auto, I didn't even talk about these, how great are these auto alignment um, lines that keep showing up and helping your patch look smooth and sexy and waxed. It's really, that was gross. And it's really amazing. Um, ah, it's really cool anyway, I guess it's not that amazing. All right, so we were almost there and I got distracted. Um, pack, float, 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 float. Uh, we're looking at this, which is the leftmost, and this is the uh, rightmost, and this is the topmost, and this is the bottommost, and then we have a message that's paint oval one, two, three, four. Okay, sweet, and now we should send these into this LCD, and now our ball state is zero, zero, so we should so we should expect to see a ball painted at zero, zero. And we do! Oh my god, we are so absurdly and rapaciously good at computers, I cannot even believe it. Cool, so we were able to do it. We are able to get this ball drawing at zero, zero. Um, so now, quickly before we run out of time, how much time do we have left? Uh, quickly before we run out of time, I have no way of seeing how... Okay, so we're just about out of time. So before we run out of time, let's say we wanted to draw that ball at an arbitrary position. Um, so to do that, all we need to do is set the position of the ball and then bang on this um, bang here. We should see the ball wherever we tell it to draw. So I make a new integer box for the x and y positions. Um, let me show you how easy this is. It's out of control how easy this is. Uh, pack integer integer. And then set position. Uh, no, let's do prepend set position. Send that into this dictionary. Um, trigger, we're first going to send that message to this dictionary. And then bang on this button, which will first clear this LCD and then uh, bang on this dictionary. So once more feeling, just so we're all really, really clear on the logic flow here. Um, first thing we do is uh, take either, when any time either the X or Y position of the ball changes, um, prepend set position to that um, to that pair. Send that as a symbol to this dictionary, which will then update the x and y coordinate of the ball. And then bang on this button that will first clear the LCD and then uh, hit all this logic here that actually draws our ball. Um, so now we should be able to move this LCD over here and set this to say four and this to say four. And look at that, we are drawing our ball exactly where it needs to be. I can't even believe it. Guys, we are so cool, it hurts. Um, we can even make this bigger or smaller, and then we'll need to fix these again, but anyway, look at that. Um, we can draw the ball wherever we want, agnostic to the actual size of our LCD. That's amazing! Um, 
Cool. So that's all the time we have for part one. I promise we'll actually get the ball bouncing around and making sound in the next video. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in part two.